Hi, Smart Pack fans. Welcome to Smart Pack's video series, Ask the Vet. And I'm Smart Packer Dan. Now, generally, you guys are used to seeing Dr. Lydia Gray with me, but today we have a special guest, Dr. Andy Kenneps. Now, some of you might recognize him from our previous Ask the Vet video and some of our other Smart Pack videos here. So, we are super excited to have you back. It's good to be here. <laughs> now, we figured with January being Joint Health Awareness Month that having someone of Dr. Kennep's expertise, it'd be very appropriate for him to come and answer your joint health questions for this month. So you think you're ready to get started? I'm all set, Dan. All right, let's dive right on in. So question number one was submitted by Jenna on Facebook, and she wants to know, she said, my horse is getting older, 15, and stiffer in his hocks and stifles. He is currently getting a smart pack for joints as well as a devil's claw plus for anti-inflammatory. A lot of people, not experts, have told me that he will benefit from joint injections. While I agree that it may uh, help him move better, I am hesitant about the cost to benefit ratio. My horse is mainly turned out in a dry lot pasture, ridden lightly in the arena, or out on easy trails one to three days per week. Is the cost of joint injections going to be practical for his workload? Is there anything else I can add to his routine that may help be less costly? <laughs> Just looking for your two cents. It's sure. like she's describing me, my horse, and my riding style, yeah. so I'm very yeah. excited for this answer. No. <laughs> Definitely uh, worth the two cents. Um, for this type of horse, where there are multiple things that can be done to make them more comfortable, especially for the type of light work that she's referring mm -hmm. to. Uh, certainly, joint injections are at the top of the list. If a joint is inflamed and painful, an injection in the joint works better than any other type of treatment. Mm -hmm. However, uh, that's not the only way to treat that kind of an issue. Uh, one of the treatments is already what the horse is on, oral joint supplements. One potential step up in treatment efficacy is a product given in the muscle or in the vein. And that type of medication can help horses with mild to moderate joint stiffness uh, along with the support of an oral supplement. And that's medication. There are other things other than medication that can be used to help keep a horse more comfortable. You know, some, some examples would be always take time to warm up the mm -hmm. horse. Don't just hop in the saddle and shoot off for the horizon. Just imagine, at least myself, I won't talk about <laughs> yourself, uh, you know, just getting out of the uh, bus at six in the morning at the starting line of the Boston Marathon and just taking off yeah. at the starting gun. You can't do that, you know, and uh, one way to uh, empathize with your horse is try that once on a cold morning go out and just suddenly go pounding down the pavement horses need appropriate warm-up time yeah I wouldn't be sound if I did that <laughs> so so th those are some of the aspects so there's more than just joint injections that can be done well and especially as to your point as far as the warm-up her horse is now 15 so things are a little bit different and might need a little bit of an extra uh, warm-up time to get ready to go for exercise absolutely and warm-up time for most horses is 10 to 15 minutes of light work you know, uh, not asking collection, not asking lateral work, just nice, free, easy flowing walk. Okay, so we're thinking she's doing the joint supplement already, potentially doing something, an injection in the muscle, for one of those types of medications, mm -hmm. and then of course having a joint injection as being another option if we feel we yes, need to go there. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. All right, so on to question number two. This was submitted by Verity and Comment on YouTube. And she wants to know, I was wondering if all horses can get swollen joints after exercise or if it's just thoroughbreds. If so, is there any way to treat it other than cold packs for, and ice for horses that hate it, like hers? <laughs> I've got a cob on light work that does a little galloping every second day or so, but gets swollen fetlocks. Is this normal? If not, what should I do? Good question. Um, uh, some horses will carry a small amount of joint swelling. Mm -hmm. And uh, for most horses, it doesn't change. It doesn't come and go. Uh, when you have significant amounts of joint swelling, 
especially those that come and go, one of the first steps we undertake is ask the question, is the horse lame or not? Mm -hmm. If the horse isn't showing lameness, uh, then it's likely benign, likely not really an issue other than for us to worry about it. Uh, the things that we need to do to investigate whether this type of joint swelling is a problem is first again, as I said, a lameness evaluation. Second, that can be uh, undertaken during the exam is to manipulate the joint, to flex the joint, uh, to put extra stress on the joint. And if the horse is sound initially, but then lame following the flexion, flexion of one of the swollen joints, that can mean a potential low-grade problem in that joint. Then the third aspect, if the horse is lame and has pain in that joint on flexion, is to image the joint, usually with x-rays. And the thing that we're looking for in particular with swollen joints is osteoarthritis mm. that show up as lips or hooks or irregularities in the joint surfaces. And with more clarification of the joint issue that's associated with that joint in, uh, increase in joint filling, we can come up with a, m a much more uh, reasonable plan on how to deal with it. Perfect. Well, I was going to say with her, it doesn't sound like her horse currently has any lameness. I would She's agree. still galloping yeah, every agree. second day, yeah. things like that. So maybe something just to kind of monitor down the road and just kind of keep an yeah. eye on. Yeah, and one thing that she can do with her horse too, if it's hard for her to tell whether the horse is showing lameness, is have someone on the ground watch while mm -hmm. she's riding. And uh, because a lot of times, you know, you're involved with your horse, you're, uh, you know, for, I'll again, speak about <laughs> myself, I'm just hanging on <laughs> and unable to really appreciate all the subtleties of the horse. But someone that's on the ground and watching the rider and the horse move out oftentimes gives you a, a clearer perspective. Well, also sometimes I find for myself, I'm a little bit, I don't know, hypochondriac. So if like, I think there's a problem, I look for the problem. Sure, sure. <laughs> so sometimes I need someone to tell me like, yeah. I'm overthinking it. Yeah. <laughs> and and as, all, as always, having your veterinarian out to take yes. a look is, you know, it, that's the gold standard. But you can get help from your friends at the barn as well. Perfect. Well, keep monitoring your horse and keep and talk with your vet, and hopefully things keep going better for you guys. So on to question number three. This was submitted by Rosemary on YouTube. And Rosemary said, I ride an older horse, about 20 years old, and he loves to jump still. He will jump the wood logs on the property sometimes. Are there any ways to keep his joints and bones in good condition, like a supplement or liniment? Since he is older, I worry he might pull something. We don't jump higher than three feet. Thanks. First off, congrats to your 20-year-old is jumping yeah. three feet. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Uh, no, that's, that's excellent. And, you know, yes, I mean, uh, you know, not so much me, but wear and tear happens as we age. I'm just joking about that. <laughs> I have plenty of wear and tear myself. But uh, any horse uh, that's 20 years of age will have some what we call wear and tear. Mm -hmm. And it's usually not an impediment. Uh, by being careful with your horse, by good nutrition, good exercise program, warming up like we talked about just uh, before. Uh, all very important parts of keeping the horse comfortable. Oral supplements for horses that are sound and uh, still in regular work without significant uh, joint or soft tissue injuries is an excellent way to keep uh, the, the joint system working as well as it can. To help support the what you already have going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's, um, it's the, any horse, whether they're 20 years old or two years old, can be susceptible to injury. And just taking the good, careful steps of uh, support, for example, with joint supplements, support by keeping the horse in a level of work rather than just resting and resting and resting and then getting on for a weekend mm -hmm. of hard riding. Uh, regular, consistent work, 
good consistent warm up and cool down following exercise, all of those play a role in keeping the horse comfortable and happy. Well, I think with her, it sounds like that she's keeping him in fairly regular work, which is probably helping at keeping him going yeah. so nicely. I yeah. think a lot of people get to the point where their horse gets to like 20 and like, oh, I need to back off and yeah. then only try to ride on the weekend and do too much too soon. Yeah, and the, and the key is pay attention to your horse. The horse will tell you when they're having issues. Uh, you'll notice a change in behavior. You'll notice a change in level of comfort as you start off on your ride. Uh, all of those things, pay attention to that because the, the horse has their ways of telling you if there's an issue that needs more careful attention. But Rosemary's horse sounds like it's in great He's shape. He's doing great. He's yeah. doing, and I love how she ca mentions three feet as those casual. I was like, anything above a ground pole, I struggle with. So Rosemary, keep up the great work. <laughs> So on to question number four. Uh, this was submitted by Ellie on YouTube. So Ellie says, my 17-year-old Oldenburg gelding used to be a high-level hunter horse in his younger days, before she knew him. Uh, from mid-2016 to mid-2017, he was leased out by his owners and received horrific farrier work where he had three-degree front wedges on with no apparent purpose or need for them. When he came to my barn, he was about 10% sound. He is a million times better now and is perfectly suitable for my riding. Very minimal, low jumping on good days. He still has a little bit of pain in his front right on and off and comes out stiff some days. He has stifle issues as well, apparently due to some compensation from the pain in his fronts. He is on Prevacox and Methocarbamol, which work extremely well for him, as well as some joint and overall health supplements. My question is this. <laughs> Do we have any suggestions on how to improve quality of life of a semi-retired sport horses with chronic osteoarthritis? I have read a lot about high dosage omega-3, for example, with EPA and DHA. Thanks so much. With four exclamation points, she's very excited. Four, very <laughs> ex yeah, uh, good question, Allie. Um, there are a number of uh, things that can be done to keep your uh, older sport horse happy and comfortable. And you've taken uh, a fair number of them already. Uh, you know, the work, uh, the uh, not overfacing the horse with jumps, uh, all those things are very beneficial. Keeping a horse in regular consistent work, as we've already mm -hmm. emphasized, is a huge part of uh, maintaining comfort and soundness. Other things that can be done uh, uh, more specifically regarding uh, conditioning can also help a horse like this. Uh, you can talk all the medications and all the supplements in the world, but uh, building or maintaining a good solid core strength mm -hmm. and also uh, enhancing joint mobility are two main facets of conditioning that we sometimes forget about, especially in a well-seasoned older horse. Mm. An example, uh, you know, we go out in the ring and we plot along or, or, or do whatever we're doing with our uh, horse's discipline or, or out on trails. But one thing that can really help the horse with joint mobility is introducing some ground poles or introducing low cavaletti poles. Those types of, uh, uh, those types of processes encourage the horse to pick the legs up. Mm. I mean, that's all there is to it. They have an obstruction in front of them, they pick their legs up. And in doing that, the horse will use more the upper limb musculature, fore and hind, and also in the process, use their top line and core strength to do that. And incorporating those items, ground poles, cavaletti, are a real strong way to build that core strength. And is this something that people should be doing at a walk to start and then increasing gates from there? Yes, absolutely. And what I refer you to is there are several texts out that talk about the use of Cavaletti in training, and they'll give uh, more specific information on interval of the poles, mm -hmm. how many poles to have in a row, how often to uh, do the exercises, and for how long. 
And so I refer you to those sorts of resources uh, to get more specifics. Yeah, I know we definitely have some blogs on our website that uh, talk about ground pulls and exercises and different things that our customer care team does with their horses. So we can definitely make sure to reference some of those for good. you guys. Good, good. Another type of uh, exercise uh, uh, aid will, that will help build core strength are there are several types of systems that uh, stimulate the nervous system to activate their core musculature. There's one with a band that goes around the belly and then around the hind legs. Uh, there's another that uses uh, bungee type stretchy cords through the bit. Um, uh, systems like that can also be, uh, if used correctly, can really do a tremendous job at building core strength. Again, that's a really important part of keeping a horse uh, happy and fit, especially as they age. Perfect. So we definitely would recommend for her to do some joint mobility, some core exercises, just overall conditioning to kind of help her horse as he's getting a little bit older yep. there. Absolutely. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So on to question number five. This was submitted by Connie on our form at smartpack.com slash ask the vet questions. And Connie says, my horse is an 11 year old off the track thoroughbred who has issues with his sacroiliac joint and an old injury in his left stifle. We are working to build his muscles and top line for strength and take time to properly warm him up. It's like she heard your earlier questions. What are some good exercises or healthy practices to keep him more comfortable during work? Well, it, it sounds like she's already started. Uh, she's watched her earlier what videos. We, what, what, <laughs> we've just, uh, what we've just discussed. And uh, there, uh, again, uh, maybe the one thing, and a lot of people don't mention their warm up. Almost everyone does it, but I don't want to, well, I do want to overemphasize warm up because uh, if you're doing a good job of building top line strength and using possibly some of the things that we just discussed, like the ground poles, Cavaletti, and then uh, some of the uh, stretchy band type devices, uh, that's great. But always remember to warm up and for 10 to 15 minutes of loose, free work, do your uh, training or intense riding and always allow 10 to 15 minutes of cool down mm -hmm. before especially now as the weather is getting colder uh, but if you're watching this in July forget I just <laughs> said that uh, but the uh, cool down is also really crit critical then the other things that she can do to help her horse are to uh, maintain a good basis of nutrition and supplements. Uh, and supplements vary on what type of feeds the horse is getting and if there are any special needs, such as in this particular horse, mm -hmm. the uh, potential of a stifle in the sacroiliac area, uh, you know, supplements that help maintain uh, joint uh, mobility, that maintain uh, joint uh, flexibility are really important. No, absolutely. And I think, like you said, she's doing so many great things. And yeah. to the part with the warm up, I think with a lot of us riders, we want to get on and just get going. That's for sure. And a lot of people will do something like, oh, I'll lunge my horse first, which isn't always necessarily like the best warm up because sometimes your horse doesn't lunge very nicely or quietly. <laughs> so making sure you're doing something that's actually productive and uh, a nice, easier warm up for your horse is I think yeah. kind of what you're referring to. That's right. They need to be relaxed during the warm up and not. Uh, you know, pushed in any way. They have, if lunging works for you and your horse is comfortable with it, fine. But uh, many horses, like you say, mm -hmm. are less than happy about lunging. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, Connie, it sounds like you're already off to a great start. So hopefully some of these extra little tips will help you out. So on to our bonus question, since we have you in. We normally do five, but since we have you here this month, we're going to take advantage of it and do a sixth one. So our bonus question was submitted by Jen Salvatore 21 on YouTube, and she says, Hi, Dan. Hi, Jen. <laughs> What's the difference between joint injections done in the muscle vein and joint injections in the joint? What types of issues are better treated with what injection sites? Okay, that's a really good question, Jen. Um, joint injections... Uh, a whole variety of different medications that we can administer in a joint only treat that joint. So that's the important part. Uh, 
uh, there, there are similar products that we put in joints that are also available for injection in the vein or in the muscle. Those products go throughout the body and they go uh, throughout the body and it's been verified that uh, these products go to joints in need that have slight inflammation in higher concentrations hmm. than other joints. So um, it's to me, uh, it, I mean, when I first heard of intramuscular or intravenous joint products, I go, how's that possible? Mm. This is a big horse. We're putting a small quantity of medication in the vein or in the muscle. How can it possibly do anything? But uh, several of the products underwent research to answer that question specifically and showed that effective levels of those drugs are in the joints. Hmm. So IV or IM administration uh, goes throughout the body. Joint injections only go into the joint where they were administered. So perhaps if you have a horse you're not maybe quite sure exactly where the issue is specifically, doing something like with intramuscular might be helpful because it's gonna go specifically to where it's needed. That's very true, that's very true. The thing is there's, there's a, you know, there's still no better method to treat a joint problem that's existing in a particular joint than injecting that joint. Mm -hmm. The e positive effect of the intravenous and intramuscular products is not as intense a response as for a joint injection. But again, we've discussed the advantages and disadvantages. If you have multiple joints in multiple locations, uh, going with a IV or IM product can be very beneficial. And this is something they would obviously be working with their vet with to come in and do flexions have to and do really that. figure out yeah. exactly what the best plan would yes, be. Yes, that's true. Of course. Well, hopefully that was very helpful for you guys. Well, that is it for our questions for this month. Thank you so much for coming in to help us out. You bet. Thanks, Dan. Uh, thank you. And of course, if any of your questions were answered on this episode, make sure to reach out to our customer care team at customercare at smartpack.com to claim your gift card. Of now, Dr. Lydia Gray will be back with us next month and ready to answer your next five horse health related questions. So make sure you keep asking those. You can submit your questions on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, our blog, and the forum at smartpack.com slash ask the vet questions. Just make sure to use the hashtag ask the vet video. So until next time, make sure to subscribe and have a great ride.